Hello everyone, we are taking a short break from the Capablanca saga to check up on Lila Chess Zero and uh, Season 14 of the 2019 TCEC, the Top Chess Engine competition. Now for those of you who don't know what uh, Lila Chess Zero is, it's a similar entity to Alpha Zero, only uh, the developers of Lila Chess Zero do not have... Um, uh, well, the resources uh, DeepMind has to uh, really quicken the development uh, of Leela, so the, they are using basically uh, computers uh, fr from uh, the entire planet. Whoever wishes can give Leela access to her uh, to your computer, and then uh, uh, Leela can also use your resources to, uh, to better herself. Uh, and she's already quite strong, uh, rated somewhere, I, I think, a little bit below 3500, and... Um, uh, we're gonna talk about the results uh, of uh, the championship after we check up on this game, but it's a really impressive game. And Alpha Zero is uh, a bit uh, busy at the moment playing StarCraft uh, and such, uh, but they call him Alpha Star now. Uh, if you've seen, uh, he really, uh, you know, destroyed some uh, elite players in StarCraft. Uh, those of you who follow StarCraft, uh, sure. Uh, I'm, I'm sure have uh, uh, seen that, but if you haven't, you know, just Google it. It, it was very impressive. I was uh, watching it live. Uh, but getting back to this game, uh, Lila has the white open, uh, <laughs> the white pieces, and uh, she opens with d4. And the thing with the TCEC, they're using opening books. So uh, the, the first few moves uh, are always, um, uh, well, uh, uh, they have to use them. Uh, so we have d4, d5, c4, e6, we have knight to f3, uh, c6, uh, so the Slav defense, uh, we have knight to c3, and now d captures on c4. Uh, we have a4, uh, this is the node boom variation, uh, and now bishop to b4. We have e3, b5 now. Uh, bishop to d2, uh, unpinning now, and uh, here we have a5. And uh, this is a, a pretty uh, standard line. It has been used plenty, uh, you know, uh, a lot of times um, in top tier tournaments as well as in uh, some weaker ones. Uh, a captures on b5, first bishop captures on c3, b uh, bishop captures on c c3, and now c captures on b5. And now, as you can see, uh, black has this uh, very nice uh, pawn chain uh, on the queen side that uh, is ready to push, but on the other side, on the other hand, uh, black is lacking in development. As you can see, black really hasn't developed any piece other than the dark, uh, the dark square bishop uh, that was traded. Uh, so b3 attacking the very strong pawn chain and bishop to b7. Uh, we have bishop back to b2. Uh, up until this point, uh, it was all uh, in the book, I believe, uh, as they didn't say, and I don't have access to every uh, line of the opening book, but I believe uh, bishop to b2 was the first uh, uh, move out of book by Leela, but it's not the first time the move was played. Uh, but okay, knight to f6, uh, Houdini keeps developing. We have b captures on c4, uh, and now b4. Uh, now creating two passed pawns on the queen side. Uh, bishop to d3, preparing to castle, Houdini castles, Lila castles, and now comes knight b to d7. Uh, continuing development, we have knight back to d2, uh, and now queen to c7. So as you can see, black has two very strong pass pawns on the queen side, and also black has a lot of pressure here against the white king. Uh, if uh, some mate threats uh, are... Uh, about to happen, uh, white white could get in some trouble, but it's all uh, worked out. Uh, we have bishop to c2, and now comes h6, first uh, preparing uh, to uh, keep the black king a bit safer. And uh, this position has been reached a few times in, in human chess, and uh, the, uh, there is one game where e4 was played, uh, but here we have rook to e1, and it is of uh, as of this moment, uh, this move 17, that we have a completely new game uh, and a position that was never reached. Uh, so rook f to e8. Uh, any queen to c6 immediate threats, uh, you can just play e4 and uh, it's not a problem. d5 is coming. Uh, black doesn't really have a way to threaten the white king just yet. So after rook e1, we have rook f to e8, developing the rook, and now comes h3, taking away the g4 square, square from the black knight, and now comes e5. Uh, now comes d5, white would rather uh, grab more space in the center than uh, exchange in the center. And also, now, yes, black does have two connected pass pawns on the queen side, but white has two connected pass pawns in the center. Uh, and here we have knight to b6. Uh, we have e4, strengthening the center. And now, what's the idea here? Why, why does white allow black to capture on c4? This is the... Well, first cool moment we have in the game. Uh, if knight captures, then knight captures and queen captures. And now, 
Uh, well, bishop to a4. You attack the rook, but also free the c-file uh, for the rook to attack the queen. And now you have to give up this exchange. If you play something like rook to e7, then you get d6, the rook is under attack. And if you play something like uh, rook to e6, then bishop to b3 would win the exchange once again once the queen moves. So you would have to part with the rook. So after e4, we first have rook e to c8. Rook a to c8 seems like a more natural move as this rook was already developed. But you don't want this rook on e8 to stay here. Uh, so, so the bishop uh, can attack it via the a4 square. So we have rook e to c8, and now comes rook to c1. Uh, knight f to d7, uh, uh, preparing to push f5 in some variations, but also perhaps getting the knight to c5. Uh, and here, oh, you can see that everything is happening. Will white be faster in pushing uh, in the center, or will Houdini be faster in pushing on the... Uh, on the queen side. And here Lila takes the opportunity to do something awesome. Here Lila makes a rook lift. We have rook to e3. Now Lila will transfer the rook to g3 and start a powerful attack against the black king. Uh, we have a4. Houdini uh, waits no time. Uh, Houdini wants to uh, play a3 and start pushing those pass pawns as soon as possible. Uh, we have rook to g3. And now what happens here if uh, black proceeds with a3? Uh, well then, queen to g4 will start uh, an attack against the black king, and this a3 move will be pretty much a waste of time. You will have to weaken your position with g6, and then the bishop will just move, and nothing happens really. So after rook to g3, we have g6, first defending against this queen to g4 move that wasn't even played. Uh, but now Lila takes this opportunity and plays queen to h5, as the pawn is pinned, so this is a, a different way to bring the queen into the game. Uh, again, if you go a3 here, then you allow some ideas like rook captures on g6 with check, captures, captures. Uh, you will lose the h-pawn as well, for example, king f8. Uh, now you can capture here. And it's uh, hard to say. The rook uh, sacrifice might not be entirely justified, uh, but you will at least have a draw. So Houdini doesn't allow this. And it's not uh, that hard to believe that this rook can also make a nice rook lift and finish the job. Uh, so, first king to h7. Houdini defends the g6 pawn, doesn't allow the, the rook sacrifice, and now comes queen back to f3. Now the f7 pawn has been weakened and uh, Lila attacks it. And again, uh, you can't uh, defend it with something like knight to c5, so the queen uh, attacks it because of queen to f6. Again, a very strong move, and now... Uh, it's hard hard to defend. The bishop captures on e5 uh, is a huge threat which would come with an attack on the queen and also the threat of checkmate. So black would have to defend the pawn, but then comes d6. The queen is under attack. And after the queen moves, now you will be able to capture here and, uh, well, the threat of checkmate is here. You will have to do something, most likely give up, uh, give up uh, the exchange here and white will again be better. So after queen to f3, we have f6. Now the knight controls the f6 uh, pawn, so there's no danger here. And we have h4. Now uh, Lila w uh, wishes to create more weaknesses. Uh, we have queen to d6, and now comes h5. Uh, we have g5, of course, uh, Houdini does not uh, want to open lines. And queen to f5 with check. Uh, we have king to h8, and now comes f4. This is the, the beautiful attacking move. Uh, because you can see that the king is perfectly aligned with the dark square bishop on this uh, b to h8 diagonal and with f4 uh, you will either play g captures and then uh, white gets a, a semi-open file for the rook, rook g6 will be deadly uh, or if you capture with this pawn it's not much better. Then comes rook captures on g5 and after h captures then comes e5 and white is blasting through. Uh, you have an attack against the queen and also the bishop and queen battery threaten the checkmate on h7. So you would have to defend queen e7, but then comes e captures on f6, and it's just all over. Queen f7, then comes queen captures on g5, and there are simply too many threats. Knight f8, uh, bishop g6, you can capture, but pawn captures, and you can see that now the pawns will finish the job. f7 is coming, queen g7, and queen h6 will be checkmate. Uh, so uh, a very interesting move, f4, uh, and we have a3. Houdini ignores the pawn and attacks the bishop. Uh, bishop to a1, and now comes queen to e7. 
Uh, and here, uh, Houdin didn't really give Leela all that much advantage, uh, only a little advantage. And Stockfish, uh, that was watching the game, Stockfish said, ah, it's not all that impressive, but then after seeing a few more moves by Leela, even Stockfish agreed that Leela has the advantage here. We have F captures on E5, uh, even though the other engines were, were suggesting Rook to F1. Uh, but okay, E captures, uh, F captures on E5, uh, Leela would definitely want to open up this diagonal from the bishop to the king. Uh, we have knight captures on e5, and now bishop to b3, uh, solidifying on this c4 pawn. And also, these two bishops now are, are a constant threat for the rest of the game against the black king, for if the position opens up, then the bishop pair will be uh, just a, a monstrosity. Uh, but okay, uh, we have knight b to d7, uh, strengthening the f6 and the e5 square, and now comes knight to f3. And now you uh, you could trade here knight captures, but uh, then you have problems. Rook captures. Uh, there's a triple attack against the f6 pawn here. Rook to f8 the defense, but then comes queen to g6. And again, white is uh, uh, just breaking through. Queen g7 defends the h6 pawn, but then c5 comes, and uh, white white is just so much better here. So after knight f3, we have queen to h7. Uh, Houdini offers a trade of queens, but queen back to h3, uh, just keeping the tension. Uh, now, this knight cannot move. Well, okay, it can move with check, but it also uh, has to keep an eye on this knight, uh, as the queen is uh, a bit uh, preoccupied with the king's side. Uh, we have rook to f8 by Houdini, and now comes knight captures on e5. We have knight captures on e5, and now, uh, not immediately starting to push your pass pawns with c5, uh, because you would have bishop to c8 here. Uh, attacking the queen, and the queen doesn't really have a good square to go to. You, you'd have to move the queen, and then the e4 pawn falls. Uh, so you do have to uh, defend against these two threats. The queen is attacking your e4 pawn, and also bishop to c8 could be quite a nuisance. So, rook to e3, defending the pawn and making some room for the queen. Uh, we have bishop to a6 now. Uh, queen to g3 by Leela, and now rook a to e8. And here, it's uh, very interesting. Yes, you do have a, a lot of options here. You could just start pushing your past pawns. And while well, you could do this, uh, this Leela finds a, a different approach, and it's quite a, quite a beautiful move. Uh, Leela plays bishop to d4. The threat is bishop to c5, attacking the rook on f8 and also the pawn on b4. Uh, so how do you prevent this? It's not all that easy. Uh, if you try something like knight to d7 uh, to defend this square here, you get queen to d6. You allow the queen into the game, and then with the queen here, it's just uh, uh, the position plays uh, itself. Uh, another thing you could try after bishop to d4 is rook to f7 with ideas of, uh, okay, if the bishop attacks, I could defend with this, uh, but then just c5, and the, the rook is really awkwardly placed here, uh, then uh, the placement of the rook will just help white push the past pawns. And yet another thing you could do is queen to b7, just trying to prevent everything with the queen, but again c5 and the white would just use uh, the awkward position of the black queen to advance his pawns, or uh, Leela's pawns. Uh, so, after bishop to d4, we have uh, queen to g7. Uh, Leela decides to give up the exchange for some counterplay. Uh, we have bishop to c5, and now comes rook to b8. The other rook defends the b-pawn, uh, which is the defender of the pass pawn that's already on a3, and uh, Houdini decides that this is much more important than the rook on f8. Uh, first, bishop to d6. Leela uh, says, okay, I will grab the exchange, but only, uh, only when I have to. So here Houdini forces it. We have rook f to d8, attacking the bishop, and only now does Leela capture the exchange. Bishop captures, rook captures, and now rook e to e1. Uh, connecting the rooks back again, uh, there will be uh, increased control of the a1 square, and also it frees uh, the e3 square for white's queen, so the white queen can now, well, not by this means, but uh, can perhaps infiltrate black's position. Uh, we have queen to d7, and now comes rook e to d1. Uh, now, both pawns are protected here, uh, and it's a, well, a, prin a nice principle in chess. You do want to put your rooks behind your pass pawns. Uh, we have king to g7 by Houdini, and now finally Leela starts pushing the pass pawns. We have c5, uh, bishop to b5, and now comes queen to e3, as the e3 square was so conveniently freed for Leela's queen. Uh, we have knight g4 attacking the queen. Now comes queen to h3. 
uh, not allowing this knight to move. You can't repeat moves here because here queen captures just wins on the spot if you just try to repeat moves. Knight captures c6 is coming after the knight moves. You can all, uh, push c7 and after rook c8 d6 is coming and there is just no stopping this. If bishop d7 then rook d4 uh, now. All of all, all of black's pieces are tied, uh, controlling the pawns here, and black will just start picking up the queenside pawns, uh, as or you could just say the rook will gobble them up. So after queen to h3, we have rook to a8, preparing to push the past a pawn, uh, but now rook to e1. Uh, rook back to f8. Black decides to wait and see what Lila will do, and now comes bishop to d1 threatening to capture uh, the knight here. We have knight back to e5, and now Lila finally trades queens as this was forced. Uh, queen captures, we have bishop captures, and now not immediately pushing the pawn, because if you push then you get knight d3, uh, th uh, it will fork the rooks, and also the rooks are uh, undefended, the bishop is between them, they are not connected. So after bishop captures d7, first rook e3, not allowing the knight to go here, uh, rook to c8 and only now c6, attacking the bishop. Bishop to e8, uh, pressuring the h5 pawn, but now rook to b1. Uh, knight to c4, attacking the rook, rook to d3, and now knight to b2. Attacking the rook and the bishop, we have rook to b3, and now comes a2. And this was Lila's plan now. Uh, Lila decides to give back the exchange. We have rook 3 captures on b2, uh, a captures on b1, promoting to a queen. Uh, or to any other piece, it doesn't really matter here. Uh, as, a, as a joke, Houdini, <laughs> Houdini actually brought a bishop into the game. Uh, rook captures on b1 and now comes b3. b3 with the idea, uh, okay, if, if bishop captures, then the bishop no longer guards the h5 pawn. This bishop can just capture it. Or if rook captures, perhaps Houdini's plan was to uh, give up uh, a piece for, for two pawns here and try to hold this to a draw. Uh, but uh, Lila doesn't allow it. Lila doesn't capture it, but first bishop to g4, and it's really an impressive move. Uh, now, there's not all that much you can do here. Uh, for example, if you move the rook, rook to, rook to c7, then rook captures on b3 is coming, and uh, now if you try to bring your king back into the game, rook b7 captures, captures, and you cannot stop promotion on a dark square. Uh, so, after this bishop to g4 move, uh, Houdini tried rook captures on c6. Uh, it's a desperate move, but Houdini decided to try something. Uh, we have d captures on c6, bishop captures on c6, and now rook captures on b3. And now, as you can see, uh, Lila is up a whole rook, Houdini played a few more moves, king f7, uh, bishop to f5, king to e7, and here, after king to f2, Houdini played bishop to e8, uh, and it was in this position that Houdini resigned the game. Or, as it is with Engines, I believe, uh, it simply took him too long to decide uh, uh, on playing bishop to e8, so uh, there's like an algorithm that decides that uh, Houdini actually resigned. Uh, but yeah, uh, this was the last game. Uh, they played uh, a match and uh, all of the games were drawn, and uh, then uh, this was the final uh, game they played uh, before going into the tie breaks, and Lila was able to win it with the white pieces. So, very impressive, and I did prepare this, but it's uh, it's quite large, so I'll, I'll just have to move it uh, for you to check up uh, how Lila uh, played this entire championship. There you can see, first Lila chess 0 uh, against uh, Engine Tucano, 8-0. to zero. Uh, Then Lila played against uh, uh, Syphos or Shipos, uh, beat him 6-2. to two. Uh, Then Lila advanced uh, against uh, Ansax and defeated him 5.5-2.5. Uh, to two and, a half. and then here we have the semi-finals. Stockfish versus Houdini. Houdini was, a was able to beat Stockfish 6-5 uh, to five against 5-5. Five to five. And Lila uh, was able to beat Komodo 10-8. And uh, there we have the finals. This is uh, the last game from the finals. Uh, Lila Chess 0 versus Houdini, 4.5 against 5.5, so beating him by a one point margin. And uh, uh, third and fourth place was decided between Stockfish and Komodo. And it's like that in every season. It's always uh, Houdini, Stockfish, and Komodo. And then and now this is the first time that Lila Chess 0 was able to win this championship. Uh, but this is only the finals. Now Lila goes into the super finals where she, where she faces a stronger version of Stockfish. Uh, I will also put a link to that in the description below. It will be the first thing you will see. Sorry, the second thing you will see. The first thing you you will see will be a link to the Lila Chess Zero blog where, where you can follow up on uh, all of the Lila Chess Zero news. Uh, but the second link in the description will be 
uh, I'll link to the live uh, this match is going on now. Uh, Lila will play uh, 100 games against this stronger version of Stockfish. And I believe so far all of the games uh, have been drawn, but you know, you're welcome to check it out and, uh, and follow uh, this match live. And the winner of the Super Finals will be proclaimed the, the, uh, the Season 14 uh, TCEC uh, champion. It would be really cool if Lila could uh, win this. Uh, and then perhaps, uh, you know, Perhaps uh, it could be used to promote uh, uh, such a match like maybe uh, Lila Chess Zero versus Alpha Zero, uh, if DeepMind would be interested in such a match. But it would be uh, really, I think uh, it would be, I don't know, uh, it would uh, the entire world would be watching that as I think uh, that would be the first time where we would have uh, two different uh, uh, self-learning uh, neural net uh, artificial intelligences uh, uh, facing each other uh, with I, I believe now with even a different uh, architecture uh, but yeah uh, who knows first the Leela has to defeat this uh, superior superior version of stockfish and then maybe sometimes in the future uh, we'll have a match Leela zero versus alpha zero uh, I think that I don't know I, I'd be pretty uh, psyched for that uh, but yeah uh, that's the game I do hope you enjoyed it and that uh, uh, well, and that uh, Lila will have a successful match against Stockfish, uh, and yeah, hopefully, hopefully we will see a, a Lila Alpha match in the future. Uh, I don't know. I, I would just be very happy for that. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, obviously now there is no point in continuing this game. White is up a whole rook. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I would like to thank Lester LaForce, Tyler Davies, uh, Dieter Petrek, uh, Paul Staples, and Joachim Dr. Radel uh, for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, most likely continuing the Capablanca saga, but also, as always, checking up on your suggestions. Uh, so thank you all, and I will see you soon.